Hey everyone, welcome back to the Outpost Underground. Today, we are diving into Kiwix Hotspot for Raspberry Pi and some ways you can build your own. You don't need to shell out $300 for this free software and a Raspberry Pi. This is a good, low-cost project to gain tech experience. And that knowledge and experience is something that could come in extremely handy in a situation where you are actually relying on this Kiwix server for vital information. If you want to access tons of offline knowledge, this tool is your new best friend. Let's jump in and we'll walk you through the entire process. For this tutorial, we'll be using the Windows version of the Hotspot Imager to create an image for your Raspberry Pi. We'll also be covering how to get past some of the obstacles you may encounter. This part of the Kiwix project is no longer maintained, so you will have to do at least a little bit of work in order to get the Kiwix imager to function on Windows. In addition to using Windows alone, we are also going to be using a micro SD card to USB adapter, a suitable Raspberry Pi such as a Raspberry Pi 02W or higher, a power source for the Raspberry Pi, and of course, a decently large micro SD card. In this case, I have a 1TB micro SD card available. First up, let's download Kiwix Hotspot Imager. Open a new web browser and head over to this URL. Select Kiwix Hotspot, then select version 2.4.13. Here you can find pre-compiled packages for Mac, Linux, and Windows. We are looking for the Windows version, so select and download the Win64 executable. Now, if you try to run this executable right away, you will run into a cryptography error. No big deal. This is an easy fix. Go down to your Windows desktop search bar and type in Environ. Select Edit the System Environment Variables. A new window will open and select Environment Variables. Another new window will open showing the current user and system environment variables. We need to add a new variable for the user, so select New. In the Variable Name field, enter exactly cryptography underscore open SSL underscore no underscore legacy. And in the Variable Value field, enter 1. Select OK, OK, and now you can go to your Downloads folder and find the Kiwix executable we just downloaded. Right click and run as administrator. At this point, the program should open and present you with the image configuration options. First, go up to the file tab and select it. Then proxy settings. Select test. As long as you are connected to the internet, Kiwix servers are up and you aren't rocking crazy settings, it should say connection successful. This is good as it is setting us up for success. Now we can enter a name for the hotspot, outpost, and select images for the favicon and logo. I leave the CSS style blank, but this stands for cascading style sheets which are used to format the layout of a web page. Once you get a functioning image, this is something you may want to play around with. Language. English. Very good. Now it says open Wi-Fi. This is default. You may want to change this. I've noticed with modern devices, they're very cautious about open Wi-Fi, so configuring a password may work out better for you. In either case, this is optional. Select your time zone, if needed, and that brings us to build path. This is important, as this is where the program is going to store all the data for the image before it writes the image to your micro SD card. When I say image in this context, it basically means a copy of the operating system and file system. For your build path, this means it needs to have a lot of space available. Ideally, you want to select a directory with decent speeds and more than twice the storage 
the image size you want to create. So if you are wanting to create an image for a 1TB micro SD card, you'll want to select a build path directory with at least 2TB of space available. This is also where Kiwix will create a cache directory which will store copies of all downloaded files and make subsequent image building much faster. Next, select your desired output. Here you can tell the application to just build an image file for you to later image a micro SD card or USB drive, or you can specify a device to image directly. Right now I'm going to just select an image file. Now for the content selection. Selecting static content allows us to select exactly which ZIM files we want for our device. Click the select button and a new window should open. However, you may get an issue where the application says catalogs download failed. This is an elusive issue. I've seen cases where the content catalog fails to open, but closing the application and reopening it fixes it. I've also seen where simply waiting a minute or so fixes the issue, as it appears the application is reaching out and downloading the content list, and if you try to access this too soon, it will give you the error. This is a known issue with the QX project, but unfortunately, this project stopped being supported by QX and it was never fixed. You can read more about it at the following URL. In any case, from what I've been able to tell is the issue arises from the application reaching out to this URL. If you enter that URL into a browser, it should resolve to a web page listing all available Zems, and if it does, this problem should be correctable. However, if you are running third-party security software, it may be blocking the connection. Moral of the story is to make sure your DNS is resolving correctly, and if it is, you should be able to access the content catalog. One thing you can also try is using the utility 7-zip to unpack the executable file and then manually running launcher.exe. There doesn't seem to be much pattern to failure, as in my experience it is rather sporadic. But now that the .exe file is unpacked, if we are still having issues, another thing to try is to access our Windows firewall and manually add each executable file to the list of programs allowed through the firewall. To do this, go down to the Windows tray and right click on the Windows Defender icon. Select View Security Dashboard. A new window will open. Select Firewall and Network Protection. Then select Allow an App Through Firewall. First we have to select the Change Settings so we can actually change things. Then, select at the bottom, Allow Another App. This will open a new window, and select Browse to navigate to the directory you unpacked the Qbox Hotspot Imager executable file. Once there, scroll down and you will see all the executables. Just pick one and select Open. Select Add. Now you can see it is added to allowed apps and features. I've already done this, so I now have two entries. You can stop here and try the imager utility, or go back and continue to add the application's executable files. And of course, once you're done, you can always remove these executables from the firewall list. To illustrate how frustrating this problem is, when recording this video, I had two iterations of the hotspot imaging utility open. One was able to access the content catalog, and one was not. Such is the pain when dealing with a project that is no longer supported. But dealing with and overcoming adversity is a very good skill to develop. Now back to the content catalog. Once the content catalog opens, on the left side is a list of languages. Select your preferred language. English, in our case. In the top right window, we have a list of all available ZIM files for English. If a ZIM is highlighted red, it means it is too large for your available free space. Free space is shown in the bottom left corner. 
So now you can browse the available Zims. And if it is something you want, just double click it. Once selected, it will show in the selected window and the size of the Zim will be subtracted from your available space. When you are done, select Done in the lower right corner. This will return you to the Hotspot Imager. And finally, there are some additional content options you can select. If you have space and desire them, go for it. If not, we are ready to run installation. If this is your first time, I suggest building a small image file and selecting a single small Zim such as Library of Knots. This will run through the process and cache a lot of the required files in your build path. There will probably be some additional pop-ups, such as for Quimu, which you will need to authorize for a successful image creation. Once successful, though, you can return to the imager and configure it for a full build. Here, I configured the imager to create a Cubix hotspot using a 1TB microSD card. I used a lot of the same settings previously covered, however you will notice I selected a macro SD card for the output instead of a file. This is key in allowing the creation of an image larger than 256GB. A word of caution here, as large image creation takes a very long time to complete, especially if this is the first time downloading the content to the build path. I ran the imager, and days later, Yes, days. I successfully created the Kiwix image, and the application wrote the image to the micro SD card. The nice thing about using the imager is it builds the image on the PC, then writes the image to the micro SD card. This is important because micro SD cards are relatively volatile when it comes to their storage, and this really limits the wear on the memory cells. The file system it writes is also write protected, so while this limits your ability to modify the data, it should, in theory, produce a reliable device that will be able to serve up its library of information when you need it. Now that the hard part is done, all we have left to do is take our micro SD card, insert it into our Raspberry Pi, connect our power, and give it a minute or so to boot up. In a very short amount of time, we will see a new wireless network appear on our Wi-Fi device, and we can connect to that network. Once connected, we open a new browser window and navigate to the hotspot. In our case, since we named the hotspot outpost, it is http colon forward slash forward slash outpost dot hotspot forward slash. Here, we can browse all the Zims and access our new library of information. You may ask, well cool, but what about when I want to turn off the device? Since the file system is write protected, you just unplug the Pi from its power source. If you want to build something more like the Pocket, you can also add a battery UPS, or uninterrupted power supply. You can also get a portable power bank and if it has an output of 5 volts and 2.1 amps, as long as you aren't using any of the accessory connections on the Raspberry Pi 02W, it should run on that as well. For example, this NOCO unit is designed as a portable jump starter, but it also has a 2.1 amp USB output. Whenever possible, it's great to find solutions to more than one problem, and having the capability to also jump start a vehicle will probably come in handy if the grid is down and I'm utilizing this Pi for reference material. Additionally, now that you have a successful image creation, you can mass produce these micro SD cards via cloning or imaging using a utility such as Rufus or the Raspberry Pi Imager. So, if you want to go into business like Gridbase, this is the secret sauce. We just ask, as does Kiwix, that you donate a small percentage of your profits back to Kiwix, as this is their creation. Gridbase recently claimed that they do, however, 
Kiwix has also recently said that Gridbase ghosted them after this was brought up. Wherever the truth may lie, that's for another day. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful or informative, please like and subscribe to our channel. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or run into issues, please let us know in the comments. We will do our best to help out. Until next time.